Hello everybody. Uh, my presentation, Horizons of Possibility, Identity, Agency, and Self-Marginalization, uh, which I'll get to very shortly. Um, the theme of the panel are, are various understandings of language teacher education in Canada and Brazil. I think as Kuberfog was just recently saying that there, one of the difficulties of doing that is that there are various understandings of what this might mean and, and what it looks like in practice. Uh, in Canada, I spent about eight years coordinating a program that was a government-funded language teacher ed program based on what are called the Canadian language benchmarks, which are a stage of 12 levels of descriptors of outcome performance indicators of uh, language performance. So that, that, that's the dominant model of teaching adult ESL citizenship uh, based on a notion of communicative language teaching, specifically the notion of task-based language teaching. Now, there's also, I mean, so that's the dominant model for adult ESL, but there's also a lot of adult um, teaching that goes on in academic programs. So there's also the preparations of teachers for English for academic purposes. Uh, there's, there's work with teachers that are now doing English for specific purposes, intensive English. So again, I think there's a variety of understanding. Today, what I'd like to talk about is related to the work I do now with Ian at Glendon. And it's a program that prepares teachers for the teaching for the English as an international language context. And um, I think Ian mentioned that today. It's actually not really preparing teachers or educating teachers as much as it's offering liberal arts component of their degree in the discipline of teaching English as an international language. So today I'd like to talk a bit about work that I'm doing in that area and um, also how it might relate or, or for us to think about its potential for working in the Brazilian context and I hope that someday in the future our students get that opportunity. Now the first thing I want to talk about today is a conference that I was at in January in uh, Lahore, Pakistan. And it was, an inter it was interesting for me, the context, because I was looking at the, the conferences on the language sciences in the developing world. And it's looking at the role of language and development, but also again this idea of what would it mean to prepare teachers uh, at a setting like London to take on the kinds of issues of this international conference. Uh, given that our project is uh, EIL. So I'd like to show you a bit, a few few sections of a document that came from the conference in Lahore, and it was in January, and the document is called the Lahore Declaration. Um, uh, unfortunately, this is really a, sh these are short excerpts. The actual document is about two pages, and I'd be happy to share it with you. Um, it was drafted by Ruani Tupas and Ahmar Maboub, and so the, the, the key things that are come across as focus points is they were drawing on a UNESCO document raising the status of language as a fundamental human right, but also this idea of language primarily as a social practice and how the teaching of language, especially in the context that I'm familiar with in Canada, often treats language as an end in itself. That there's still the, the primary assumption of language teaching or and language teacher education is code mastery. Master the vocabulary, master the grammar, and that these are separate from language in the world. The Lahore Declaration attempts to place language as, as they say, a primary semiotic processor which we construe and project realities. And it is fundamental to an interrelated social problem. So to me, these are interesting ways to rethink or reconceptualize language teacher education. What kinds of priorities? Um, out of the document, there are a number of recommendations um, there's, that are made. So you see the idea of setting up independent departments of applied linguistics. In many parts of Asia, where, and especially Pakistan, some of the problems have been, as, we tra as you say, we train too many people with uh, master's degrees in English literature. And we have other issues, other problems, language in the world that needs to evolve, solve specific problems. Um, and this is developing language to address real world problems. Uh, now I would like to go to the next set of recommendations. Um, 
the focus on greater emphasis of multilingualism, not only as a learning issue, but also in terms of justice and equality across nations. And here's the one that I'm primarily focused on in the context of language teacher education. Developing the capacities of field professionals to implement project goals. And so this directly relates, I believe, to language teacher education for the kind of programs that uh, I'm, I'm working in now. And this goes back to Huberbau's idea. And uh, one of the discussion points of the conference that language policy and planning is not just a top-down activity. It is a bottom-up, locally, uh, organically um, generated activity in which teacher identities, teachers' roles, teacher are policy implementers and potentially agents of change. And then, in terms of language teacher education, making teachers aware of the broader context and the developmental context within, the, within which they work. Now, at the same conference, um, I talked about an article that Ian and I um, we both have read, and I'm, use, I'm going to use in my course that I shared with you last week by uh, Kumar Vadivelo, who I think he said some really interesting things in the context of development. Ah, but first, my favorite visual metaphor of the teacher's lot in life. <laughs> you have possibilities, oh, what, what's the word? Um, I think something that uh, Andrea said that I really like. Yeah, perils and possibilities. <laughs> You have possibilities, the horizon, aspirations, and often driven by our teaching, and then here you have the peril. And Kumar talks about this peril, the, the metaphor of the teacher's life, and there's also the sense of solitude, which is an interesting metaphor, because many teachers feel that they're on their own once they go inside the classroom. So I, I love this visual metaphor. Uh, it's a photograph my sister took just outside Regina, and you can imagine the 30 below quality, uh, the hoar frost, et cetera, on the fence. Now, I use this and I set this up to a uh, relationship with Kumar's text. And uh, Kumar's article, he talks about marginalization, self-marginalization. He uses a term that um, many of us talk about this idea of epistemes, epistemic um, cognitive justice. He talks about epistemic dependencies particularly on the center-based knowledge systems. He highlights what he says are five epistemes. He says the tap root is native speakerism, and it drives the industry in so many ways. But he also talks about our dependency as teachers, teacher educators throughout the world, our dependency particularly on notions of who produces knowledge in the field, who decides what are appropriate methods, what does it mean to be culturally competent, and the textbook industry, and again, he talks about these. And I'll, I'll give you a, a talk that talks about these as driving our field, and the central challenge of language teacher education is ways of overcoming that. And the term he uses a lot that I think is particularly important is this idea of self-marginalization. How knowledge acquires us. It creates, uh, to use Andrea's words, the possibilities, but the perils, the insights and the blind spots. And for me, one of the big challenges, and, and this is Valkyrie's paper, so the big challenges of our work is thinking about ways in which we can present opportunities for teachers to see this bigger, bigger picture. Okay, here's a nice quote, depending on what side of the center or periphery you're coming from to look at. The magnitude of the epistemic dependency that enslaves the teaching of EIL is enormous. The reasons are not far to seek. The epistemic dependency stands solidly on the twin rocks of the process of marginalization and the practice of self-marginalization. The former <laughs> pertains to the ways in which the coloniality of the English language exploited to maintain the authority of the center over the periphery. The latter refers to the ways in which the periphery surrenders its voice and vision to the center. Interesting food for thought. And again, it's, it's important for teachers of English as an international language to think about the implications of the teaching in this context. Um, and here's one more quote. If the teaching of e EIL as a profession is serious about helping its professionals generate sustainable knowledge systems that are sensitive to local, historical, political, cultural, and education exigencies, then it must get away from an epistemic operation that continues to institutionalize the coloniality of English language education. And this next part is a challenge. Merely tinkering with the existing knowledge systems 
will only reinforce them rather than invent them. What a real epistemic break will eventually ensure are new ways of constructing knowledge systems and new ways of applying them in classroom context, and new ways of applying them in classroom context. This is quite a challenge. And I think each one of us in, in our language teacher education programs, instead of thinking of the grand program, is thinking about ways of helping teachers realize this, especially into the different sites and settings they go. And uh, Valkyria uh, talks about this in her paper, this idea of agency. That students in different settings are going to come with different histories, both personal, communal, social, and there will be. And, and Andrea's done this in her work in critical literacies too. So we need to think about in what setting, what kinds of practices, what kinds of uh, texts, relationships will allow us to to attempt to approximate what our very ambitious goals for Kumar Khan development. So there isn't one kind of programmatic, this is what language teacher education should look like. I think for me it's more like what Valkyria talks about. What are the tools to place the identity, the identity of teachers into a space where they're no longer self-marginalizing their role as just technicians? We're here just to take expert knowledge and do it. What gets them into the space and the possibility of saying, this are what possibilities for us to design a unit, a lesson plan, a policy document? A, set, a cooperative group of teachers to potentially change that. So this is the, this is kind of these are the types of things I'm looking at in the places uh, where I work. Now um, I wanted to show you one of one of the things that I I'm working on. Of course, English is a world language. Uh, this is the program that Ian has uh, been running for how many years now? Well, officially. Um Okay. Um, this gives you an idea of the full set of kinds of the knowledge base. Again, we're talking about where, uh, what kinds of issues shape the language teacher identity and skill base. This is something Ian initiated last year, which I th think is one of the most positive uh, additions to the program. It's introductory Spanish or equivalent as a prerequisite. And, and again, it's not just a case of having uh, uh, a, an awareness, a contrastive awareness of grammar and, and uh, the language and text in the language, but it's also a relationship. Ian's described it as a horizontal relationship, one of equality between different languages. And again, this idea of English being placed within a more plural, plurilingual, multilingual, um, international context. Um, the course that I'm going to talk about, English as a World Language, I'm going to describe one of the practices that um, I think increases teacher potential for agency. Um, here are the readings in the course. These are some of the themes. So again, if you want students to do work in projects, you need to place them within a, a literacy or a literature framework in which the knowledge base begins to help them imagine what might be uh, transformative practices. So you can't just say, go out there and you're empowered, change the world, you have agency. You need to think about, over time, what are kind of the recursive kinds of texts, relationships, things to expose it to. So these are some of the themes that we read. We place again, like the Lahore Declaration, we try to place students in this course into a more language in society, in local context position. Language is part of a vast range of semiotic and identific identificatory identity relationships. Now, I'd like to talk briefly about assignment, which is the last assignment in this course that we do. And it's called the Issues Analysis Project. We talked about this last week uh, at the <laughs> I knew I could get a laugh out of that. It's funny how a little phony we're just a funny thing. Just get the room going. Yeah. Okay. Just remember you have to pee. You speak, I speak, we all speak, you right? Okay. Um, and this is something that I've been doing in different programs for a while now. It originated with our colleague uh, Nick Elson at York. So the premise of the assignment, the effective teacher is aware of the socio-political context within he or she works. Uh, it assumes that the instructors of professional responsibility attempt to deal with issues that impact negatively on the teacher learning process. Now, 
the key thing, blueprint for action, I found out last week that the metaphor of blueprint doesn't make any sense. People are asking, what you, why blue? And it comes from this idea, Carla's saying, what's the blue thing about? It, I guess it comes from architecture and engineers have a kind of design for what will eventually be realized in, in, in concrete materials, fraction materials. So it's like a design. It was a time of carbon. A time of carbon and everything had to be blue. And it had a smell to it also. So the idea of this, and it, go, and it relates to things we talked about with agency and language teacher education, is an apprenticeship into texts that have have influence and power in our field. So you can't just ask teachers to go out and make changes, to be policy implementers, to be local agents of change just by making an announcement. It's done, go do it. You've read the theory, you're now empowered. You have to think about what might be acts of apprenticeship. What would be the genres and texts that in our profession will have people listen to you seriously? that might have people take take what you have to say seriously, um, that would give you uh, symbolic capital amongst your, and uh, linguistic capital amongst your colleagues. So that this this is a key area. So here are some of, some of the, I think, having done this for about six or seven years now, some of the advantages and di advantages, disadvantages. As I mentioned, it's, it's an apprenticeship into the kinds of texts in which people gain stature, authority, power in their field. Um, it encourages this movement we talk about between theory and practice, praxis, from the imagination to action, and from action back to the imagination. Uh, back, I love Bakhtin's notion of authoritative to internally persuasive discourse, the dialogic imagination, and this presumes the act of meaning making and, and mediation or resistance of the student teacher. They must engage with these texts and decide uh, to what extent I'm going to, to use them. And, and it reflects things that Ian and I have talked a lot about it eco semiotic, ecological, recursive, experiential, multimodal forms of teaching. Disadvantages, this kind of activity is very hard for teachers who never uh, haven't had any, haven't had much experience. So again, the mentoring and providing of exemplars is key. And what's often a problem in busy school schedules, I have students say, gee, I'd like to do a project with other students, but I'm too busy. And it's, and the, one of the things that I, I try to emphasize, if you want to go out and make a difference in any workplace, you need to collaborate, with colleagues, if you want to change the place you work or, this, or the syllabus you're dealing with, you need to uh, build a consensus, you need to compromise, you need to discuss. So in a sense, working in a group project helps do that. How much time? One minute, okay. <laughs> so these are the advantages and disadvantages. We've talked about this before. It's the issue of agency in a very kind of practical sense. I think I had, yeah, one quick one. I was going to talk about the one I, uh, one of the, the uh, uh, issues analysis projects I, I uh, mentioned in the conference in Lahore. And it was kind of interesting because the group didn't know I was going to Pakistan. I didn't even know when they did this. But it was on a peace education through transformative learning. It was a two hour workshop. Uh, you see the abstract in, uh, for uh, Pakistan, English language teachers in Pakistan. You can see the rationale. They, they designed it as 25, 25 minutes each. You would rotate around activities, developing critical consciousness. They had, of course, been reading Paulo Freire and uh, Sifakis on Transformative Teacher Ed. Um, they, they had an activity where you would, students from different teachers from different parts of the country would ask them, imagine what a peaceful classroom and community would look like. So again, this idea of dialoguing, using language to, to uh, to imagine this. Um, sharing, sharing peace narratives, they were talking about um, setting up an, uh, connections with international networks of teachers. There's a whole organization, Peace and Justice Studies, setting up uh, a network 
market of internet connections. And then the last one is negotiating the rules of the classroom. Again, this idea of, of modeling more equitable relationships with teachers and students. Anyway, that was the idea. I was very impressed. Um, I think that's it. Let me just, uh, yeah. I asked the student Zaria why she picked this. We saw, we saw the need to provide a workshop for pre-service and in-service teachers to gain knowledge of the cultural surroundings and manifest that in teaching to make them more sensitive, receptive to the roles of teachers as agents of influence and change as developing educators. Uh, and I contacted her later to say that I was going to Pakistan, and she briefly just said, I hope that answers your question. I'm so excited to hear you're going to Lahore. You're going to love it there. Try all the food, and if you have time, don't forget to visit the markets. You'll find really nice things are cheap, and I mean beautiful things you can decorate your house with that would make lovely presents. I sound like a bad tour guide, but I'm second hand to say it for you, LOL. And again, the interesting thing here is this kind of identity relationship, the shifting of the personal, professional, interpersonal, this relationship between teacher, educator, student teacher, project, and the agency and identity. And that's it.